Chapter 6 of Night of the Living Dummy by R.L. Stein. Do you like him? At first, Chris thought that Slappy had asked the question. She gapped in stunned belief. Well, what do you think of him? It took Chris a moment to realize that the voice was coming from behind her. She turned to find her father standing in the doorway, still dabbing at his eyes with a wet dish towel. The, the new dummy? Chris stammered. He's for you, Mr. Powell said, stepping into the room. The wet towel pressed against both eyes. Really? Chris hurried over to the chair and picked the new dummy up to examine him. There's a tiny pawn shop on the corner across from my office, Mr. Powell said, lowering the towel. I was walking past it, and believe it or not, this guy was in the window. He was cheap, too. I think the pawnbroker was glad to get rid of him. He's cute chris said searching for the right word he looks just like lindy's dummy except that his hair is bright red and not brown probably made by the same company mr powell said his clothes are better than slappy's chris said holding the dummy out at arm's length to get a good view i hate that stupid gray suit on lindy's dummy the new dummy wore blue denim jeans and a red and green flannel shirt and instead of the formal-looking shiny brown shoes, he had white high-top sneakers on his feet. So you like him? Mr. Powell asked, smiling. I love him! Chris cried happily. She crossed the room and gave her dad a hug. Then she picked up the dummy and ran out of the room, down the stairs, and into the kitchen. Hey, everybody, meet Mr. Wood! she declared happily, holding the gr grinning dummy up in front of her. Barky yapped excitedly, leaping up to nip at the dummy sneakers. Chris pulled her dummy away. Hey! Lindy cried in surprise. Where'd you get that? From Daddy, Chris said, her grin wider than the dummy's. I'm going to start practicing with him after dinner, and I'm going to be a better, a way better ventriloquist than you'd ever be. Chris! Mrs. Powell scolded. Everything isn't a competition, you know. I already have a job with Slappy, Lindy said with a superior sneer, and you're just getting started. You're just a beginner. Mr. Wood is much better looking than Slappy, Chris said, mirroring her twin sister's sneer. Mr. Wood is cool looking. That gray suit on your dummy is the pits. Okay, that's just weird. You think that ratty old shirt is cool looking? Lindy scoffed, making a disgusted face. Yuck, that old dummy probably has worms. You have worms, Chris exclaimed. Your dummy won't be funny, Lindy said nastily, because you don't have a sense of humor. Oh yeah? Chris replied, tossing Mr. Wood over her shoulder. Shoulder, I must have a sense of humor. I put up with you, don't I? Copycat, copycat, Lindy cried angrily. Out of the kitchen, Mrs. Powell ordered with an impatient shriek. Out, get out. You two are impossible. The dummies have better personalities than either of you. Thanks, Mom, Chris said sarcastically. Call me for dinner, Chris called back. I'm going upstairs to practice my act with Slappy for the birthday party on Saturday. It was the next morning, and Chris was sitting at the dressing table she shared with Lindy. Chris rummaged in the jewelry box and pulled out another string of brightly colored beads. She slipped them over her head and untangled them from the other three strands of beads she was wearing. Then she gazed at herself in the mirror, shaking her head to... Be Better see the long, dangly earrings. I love my, my junk jewelry collection, she thought, digging into the depths of the wooden jewelry, bro jewelry box to see what other treasures she could pull out. Lindy had no interest in the stuff, but Chris could spend hours trying on the beads, fingering the dozens of little charms, running her fingers over the plastic bracelets, jangling the earrings. Her jewelry collection always cheered her up. She shook her head again, making the long earrings jangle. A knock on the bedroom door made her spin around. Hey, Chris, how's it going? Her friend, Cody Matthews, stepped into the room. He had straight, white blonde hair and pale gray eyes in a slender, serious face. 
Cody always looked as, as if he were in deep thought. You ride, you ride your bike over? Chris asked, removing several strands of beads at once and tossing them into the jewelry box. No. Walked. Chris replied. Cody replied. Why'd you call? You just, you just want to hang out? No. Chris jumped to her feet. She walked over to the chair by the window and grabbed up Mr. Wood. I want to practice my act. Cody groaned. Ugh. I'm the guinea pig? No. The audience. Come on. She led him out to the bent old maple tree in the middle of her backyard. The afternoon sun was just beginning to lower itself in the clear spring blue sky. She raised one foot against the tree trunk and propped Mr. Wood on her knee. Cody sprawled on his back in the shade. Tell me if this is funny, she instructed. Okay, shoot, Chris replied, narrowing his eyes in concentration. Chris turned Mr. Wood to face her. How are you today? she asked him. Pretty good. Knock wood, she made the dummy say. She waited for Cody to laugh, but he didn't. Was that funny? she asked. Uh, kinda, he replied without enthusiasm. Keep going. Okay. Chris lowered her head so that she was face to face with her dummy. Mr. Wood, she said, why were you standing in front of the mirror with your eyes closed? Well, that answered the dummy in a high-pitched squeaky voice. I wanted to see what I look like when, I, when I'm asleep. Chris tilted the dummy's head and made him look as if he were laughing. How about that joke, she asked Cody. Cody shrugged. Uh, better, I guess. Ah, uh, you're no help, Chris screamed angrily. She lowered her arms and Mr. Wood crumpled onto her lap. You're supposed to tell me if it's funny or not. I guess not. Chris, Cody said thoughtfully. Chris groaned. I need some good joke books, she said. That's all. Some good joke books with some really funny jokes. Then I'd be ready to perform because I'm a pretty good ventriloquist, right? I guess, Cody replied, pulling up a handful of grass and letting the moist green blade sift through his fingers. Well, I don't move my lips very much, do I? Chris demanded. Not too much, Cody allowed, but you don't really throw your voice. No one can throw their vo her voice, Chris told him. It's just an illusion. You make people think you're throwing your voice. You don't really throw it. Oh, C Cody said, pulling up another handful of grass. Chris tried out several more jokes. What do you think? She asked Cody. I think I have to go home, Cody said. He tossed a handful of grass at her. Chris brushed the green blades off Mr. Wood's wooden head. She rubbed her hand gently over the dummy's painted red hair. You're hurting Mr. Wood's feelings, she told Cody. Cody climbed to his feet. Why do you want to mess with that thing anyway? He asked, pushing his white blonde hair back off his forehead. Because it's fun, Chris replied. Is that the real reason? Cody demanded. Well... I guess I want to show Lindy that I'm better at it than she is. You two are weird, Cody declared. See you in school. He gave her a little wave, then turned and headed for his home down the block. Chris pulled down the blankets and climbed into bed. Pale moonlight filtered in through the bedroom window. Yawning, she glanced at the clock radio. Nearly ten. She could hear Lindy brushing her teeth in the bathroom across the hall. Why does Lindy always hum when she brushes her teeth? Chris wondered. How can one twin sister do so many annoying things? She gave Mr. Wood one last glance. He was propped in the chair in front of the window, his hands carefully placed in his lap, his white sneakers hanging over the chair edge. He looks like a real person. Chris thought sleepily. Tomorrow, I'm going to check out some good joke books from the library at school. I can be funnier than Lindy. I know I can. She settled back sleepily on her pillow. I'll be asleep as soon as we turn off the lights, she thought. A few seconds later, Lindy entered the room, wearing her nightshirt and carrying Slappy under one arm. You asleep? she asked Chris. Almost, Chris replied, yawning loudly. 
I've been studying for the math final all night. Where have you been? Over at Alice's, Lindy told her, setting Slappy down in the chair beside Mr. Wood. Some kids were over, and I practiced my act for them. They laughed so hard, I thought they'd split a gut. When Slappy and I did our rap routine, Alice spit her chocolate milk out of her nose. What a riot! That's nice, Chris said without enthusiasm. Guess you and Slappy are ready for, er for Amy's birthday party on Saturday. Yeah, Lindy replied. She placed Slappy's arm around Mr. Wood's shoulder. They look cute together, she said. Then she noticed the clothing neatly draped over the desk chair. What's that? She asked Chris. Chris raised her head from the pillow to see what her sister was pointing at. My outfit for tomorrow, she told her. We're having a dress-up party in Miss Finch's class. It's a farewell party for Margaret. You know, the student teacher? Landy stared at the clothes. Your Betsy Johnson skirt? Your silk blouse? We're supposed to get really dressed up. Chris said, yawning. Can we go to sleep now? Yeah, sure. Lindy made her way to her bed, sat down, and clicked off the bedroom lamp. Are you getting any better with Mr. Wood? She asked, climbing between the sheets. Chris was stung by the question. It was such an obvious put-down. Yeah, I'm getting really good. I did some stuff for Cody out in the backyard. Cody laughed so hard he couldn't breathe. Really? He was holding his sides. He said Mr. Wood and I should be on TV. Really? Lindy replied after a long moment's hesitation. That's weird. I never thought Cody had much of a sense of humor. He's always so grim. I don't think I've ever seen him laugh. Well, he was laughing at Mr. Wood and me, Chris insisted, wishing she were a better liar. Awesome, Lindy muttered. I can't wait to see your act. Neither can I, Chris thought gloomily. A few seconds later, they were both asleep. Their mother's voice, calling from downstairs, awoke them at seven the next morning. Bright, morning orange sunlight poured in through the window. Chris could hear birds chirping happily in the old maple tree. Rise and shine, rise and shine. Every morning, Mrs. Powell shouted up the same words. Chris rubbed the sleep from her eyes, then stretched her arms high over her head. She glanced across the room, then uttered a quiet gasp. Hey, what's going on? She reached across to Lindy's bed and shook Lindy by the soldier. What's going on? Huh? Lindy startled, sat straight up. What's the joke? Where is he? Chris demanded. Huh? Chris pointed to the chair across the room. Sitting straight up in the chair, Slappy grinned back at them, bathed in morning sunlight, but Mr. Wood was gone.